So I just want to say to everyone, welcome to this session on ethics in reporting, the work of think tanks. Um, I'm Keith Burnett, I'm Managing Director of Communications and Publishing at Chatham House, which is an international affairs think tank. Um, my background is has been working in Parliament for publishers, with the media, uh, with private and not-for-profit organisations. And I have to say, I have never seen a time when trust across institutions and sectors has been so eroded. Uh, I mean, in part, this is because of a lack of transparency, a disregard of facts and the way that research and evidence is presented in the media, uh, as well as a, uh, the context of a highly polarised political system. And this shines a light on think tanks, uh, on our agendas, the standards we hold ourselves to, how we account for our work, and how we address and work with different audiences. So this is a very important and timely discussion, and I'm delighted to have Laura and all of you here today. Now, Laura Somar is an inspiring, award-winning journalist from Argentina. She is editor-in-chief of Chequiado, uh, the first initiative of fact-checking and verification of public discourse in Latin America. She is also a member of the board of the International Fact-Checking Network, the Consultative Council of Sembra Media and the Brazilian website Gender and Number. The Chequiado is a remarkable organization. It's known for its innovation and rigor and for setting trends. It's 10 years old, I believe, uh, and at a time when fake news and disinformation has been mainstreamed, it's vital for organizations like Chequiado, credible media outlets and serious think tanks to work together, to learn from each other and to ensure that we get credible, trusted information to policymakers and into the public domain. And that's why we're here today, to learn, to be open, to question. Um, and from my organization's perspective, uh, Chatham House, a London-based think tank, uh, it was from the outset, 100 years ago, built on principles based around public benefit, integrity, independence and objectivity, um, and more recently with a focus on openness and accountability and awareness and responsibility. Um, and I know that if or perhaps when uh, we have failed, when we get it wrong, it's noticed. It's noticed within our community and our reputation uh, could be damaged. And that's the right thing to happen. Um, and think tanks, like every other sector, are facing difficult decisions at the moment. There's no question about that. Um, and as part of our job today, here at this event is to help each other navigate some of the more difficult decisions. Uh, if we get to a world where you simply can't believe what you read or see from politicians, uh, from the media and from other think tanks, or from sources that you would otherwise respect uh, and expect to have a degree of responsibility and credibility, then we are all weakened and compromised. Uh, and often by people who aren't interested in facts or wider public good. So this is fundamental to our democracies and our lives and our well-being. Uh, and it's very real. It's here now. So without much further ado, it's not a long <laughs> introduction, but uh, I'm going to get started with an introductory presentation from Laura, uh, followed by a discussion between the two of us. Uh, and then I'll open the floor to questions. And we have around an hour and 10 minutes or so. So, Laura, over to you to get Ready. the Okay, thank you uh, for the presentation and thank you uh, all of you that are there. Um, just to add some of my background that perhaps is useful for you to know, is that before I start working as editor-in-chief and executive director in Chequiado, I used to be the communication director of CPEC, that is one, is perhaps the most important think tank in Argentina, one of the most important in the region. And, and in that moment, uh, and that was more or less eight years, and eight years before I used to write about transparency and corruption and justice and civil rights in one of the main newspapers of the country. And then I have these I can set three different hats that are not necessarily different hats, but are in some cases different hats that I expect can allow me to share with you some questions or at least some ideas that perhaps are useful for you if you're working on a think tank on trying to, to improve your reach or to improve 
how you impact or have more attention in in this complex environment that Kate described about polarization, people don't necessarily pay attention to evidence or to facts, and some of us believing that this is new or perhaps it's worse than in the past. Then um, one of the one of the main ideas that I have to share with you today is that when we start working in Tequiado, we have all leaders, all media, all organizations to check. And they were with the name uh, a person or an institution that were easily to identify. And after, I don't know, five years or so ago, with, with all these um, increase of viral content and with all the movement related to disinformation in the public debate there are some days that everyone is talking about an issue that no one knows who started and why we start to talk about that and and that's as generally happened uh, that that um, issue can made us an interesting possibility if we are working on a think tank, producing good evidence, producing research, producing data. And I said that because it is perhaps more important than ever that the audience know who's behind the content, who's behind that data or that presentation. And related to that, I think one of the one of the things uh, that think tanks is useful to think more about is how transparent are their own process related to when they appear or not in the public debate or in a discussion. As as we all know, not all the research that we um, prepare are necessary. Uh, giving us the evidence that we need to push up the agenda that our organization got. And we all know that in general, journalists or some, in some cases, citizens believe that think tanks works for the public interest. But if we analyze that more in deeply, we know that in most of the cases, the think tanks have some agendas that are just in a general way as a public interest, but in some different areas, for example, education or gender, they have particular interest on pass a law or obtain a more budget or even, I don't know, etc. And one of the lacks that I'm seeing in a lot of think tanks in the region is that they are not necessarily working enough on being transparent about how they decide when they are going to be silent and when they are going to be part of the discussion. And I think in the environment of this information, that can be a problem, uh, a much bigger problem than in the past. Perhaps, Kenneth, it's good that we, we had a conversation and then I had some more ideas, but this is one of the, of the biggest or the most important that I have is in the past, all the think tanks, when I was to be the executive, the, the director of communication in CPEC, we were all the time trying to reach people or to read uh, people by the media or to be more important for the politicians, but not necessarily discussing internally um, if it is good or not to be there in that discussion or to be out. And if we decide not to be in the discussion, we, are, we didn't be accountable for that. Then perhaps one of the questions that I have is, what about if the think tank have a 
annual report explaining all the issues that they decide not to be part on or explaining all the research that they uh, did by don't necessarily publish on the media because they were not uh, aligned with their agenda i don't know perhaps you think I'm so idealistic. Or I'm no, no, not at all. And I'd, I'd be really interested to know what others' experiences are of that. Because, you know, I would say that I know that there are certainly times when it's less convenient than others. But I, I would say for most of the think tanks I know, most of the London-based think tanks I know, and probably, you know, on the East Coast of, of the States, that there are ways that almost protect us before we get there. So we're not put in a position, you know, we, we know up front what we're accepting funding for, what's expected. And sometimes, of course, you, you push back. Sometimes there's a bit of negotiation. You're in, a, in, a, in an area, which could be even say a gray area sometimes. But I think, that's a, I think that's a really, really interesting point. And, I'm, and I think that goes hand in hand with, with your starting point, which is around the process and how transparent we are around the process. So... We'll come back to the second point, but on the first point, it, I've noticed increasingly, now we, we don't get, and I can really only talk about, you know, on behalf of Chatham House, of course, but I noticed that in the media, particularly the British media recently, they have, and the BBC, they have a way of describing an organisation. So it might be left, it might be sort of right of centre, it might be independent, or with a bit more of a description. Some, some get highly respected, um, or respected, um, which is yeah. which is good, but or sometimes independent. But and the point is that there's there's a little bit of digging, and I would say that because most journalists understand or do the research, they find out most credible journalists anyway will find out where an organisation is coming from, and they will probably be satisfied themselves. So the public element of it is quite superficial and light touch. Do you think that? that think tanks themselves need to take on that role because I don't think we can rely on the media to really drill down. I know that, again, sorry, because this is a question and now I'm doing all the talking, but I know when we've been asked before, occasionally we will be asked if someone's going on the BBC or a broadcaster or being quoted, they will ask us about how that person is funded or the project or the work that yeah, they're talking um, about is funded. Now, I still find that's quite rare. Um, and I sort of think that's because they feel they know already. Um, and sometimes, like, when we get asked that question, we take it really seriously. And yeah. the researcher tends to know. But are you talking about that, or is it something a bit deeper that we need no. to take this on board ourselves and volunteer? So the good think tanks should be volunteering that so that journalists get used to knowing up front what it's about, and then they can start to question others. Uh, I'm... Uh, I would love think tanks to do it proactive uh, in the same way that I'm asking the media to do it. Uh, if, if we think about the citizens and how we can improve the access to information and the right to information of the citizens and how can we improve the public debate, I think that can be a good practice. I, I'm not sure exactly how that good practice can be and what i'm just introducing in this conversation is perhaps one of the issues that can be in the future agenda or the present agenda of the think tanks is how can we improve this because we are all the time asking the government uh, to be transparent to be clear about the conflict of interest to be clear about their budget and i think i'm not sure that not necessary think tanks uh, are necessary in the same level that we are asking others. Yeah. And I'm sure that media in most of our countries, uh, they are with that, that uh, problem or lack of, of info also. But what I'm saying to, to answer your question directly is excellent if the think tanks start to do it before. I expect that as the journalists gonna be increasing their need to be accountable for their own audience, they're gonna be asking more and more these type of things. 
I'm yeah. not saying it's not going to happen next month, perhaps not this year, next year, but I expect it's going to start to happen. And, and the things that perhaps you all um, um, uh, be part before is that in general when a journalist call a source the source always wants the journalist to present he or she as professor or teacher or something like that and one of the things that we as fat checking organization have in our own methodology for our newsroom is that you should ask all the positions that person have and to open all the positions that can be conflict of interest about that uh, content and then i'm not saying that's going to happen tomorrow in all the newspaper or all the radios all around the world but i think it's going to start to happen more and more and i think it's going to be useful if the good think tanks start to think more about it and I'm assuming you would be prepared to work with think tanks. You would be prepared to work with your your network of like-minded organisations who you share, you know, who you share and work with anyway, um, to set some kind of template that yeah. we could all buy into. Yeah, of good course. idea. That's yeah. a very good idea. Um, yeah. And how? I mean. Do, You've spoken with think tanks about this before. Is is there a reluctance? Is there a kind of hesitation about this? Because it's a bit, you know, this is this I think would feel for many think tanks like quite a big step. And at the moment, we are used to we're used to sort of overall transparency, being being transparent about the finances and the budgets and you know, working it in such a way that it, you know, it it serves, I think, the purpose of everybody. Um, but what we really, really need to do from what I'm hearing you say is this cuts across everything we do. This cuts, it's going to cut across everything. I, 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 yeah, I think, I think perhaps the idea that we used to have about transparent or financial transparent in the past is not enough today. At least not enough today for me in this context that is so wired and so polarized. And then all the all the efforts that we can do for example uh, opening why we decide this agenda and not the other why we decide to intervene or not in this discussion or not all that i think can be just a plus point for that think tanks not only related to their credibility or trust in the future but also start to being more i don't know more uh, like being a being behind the agenda and not just reacting yeah. Of, yeah of what we imagine can be good for the future and what differences are there across the world are there certain areas where it's easier or more difficult uh, there are representatives from from everywhere at this conference and um, there needs to be we need to work together i guess we need to make sure that you know that this isn't just something that's applying to a few think tanks in, in one place. It needs to be something yeah. that everyone buys into. Um, and okay, and where are the where are the places that we should start? Yeah, I I I always as I come from the south, I think in most of the cases some of the innovation come from the south because we needed to do them to survive or something like that. And in in some cases we need to do that. Um, step or that policy because we need to be more legitimate than others in other uh, or democracies or systems then uh, making making obviously the the statement that countries where democracies are in risk and the leaders of the think tanks or the organization are in risk uh, or so in that case is perhaps all what I'm saying is not necessarily uh, a good idea to implement. I, I think for the rest, it's not that we have uh, necessary difference or problems between the North or the South, because it depends on our decision, what we are going to make transparent and how we're going to do or prepare process 
uh, inside the organizations to have all the discussions. Yes. Okay. And Laura, what can you say something? Can you say a little bit about the risks if we don't do this? If if things stay the same, uh, how how is the outside world going to change that and, and think tanks could find themselves? Uh -huh. I think I think the risks are more or less what we saw uh, related to uh, there are much more possibilities to lose our credibility because of the environment because make uh, this information content is really cheap and it's really quickly and then I I think all the systems and procedures that we can do in advance to have enough data already published before some of these attacks or some of these propaganda campaigns arrive against us can make us stronger. Sure. And I mean some but some of the some of the uh, some of the areas we want to be transparent about aren't directly measurable. So money, income is, is easy to measure. How do we get around, you know, how do we get around the, the, the relationships? Because relationships and networks can be very, very important. And, you know, they're there. Most of us or many of us know many, many others, and not just in think tanks, but in corporates and government. That's how often think tanks run. Some of that isn't tangible. It's going to be difficult to measure. It could oh, look oh, suspicious, yeah. but you are you are obviously right. What I'm saying, and that's also my own personal experience, is that if you already publish it, if someone criticizes you because of that relationship, and you show you already published that you've got that relation, you are in a much or in a better position than if, if you didn't open it. I'm not saying we're gonna, we, we can make all the solutions of the world because of transparent. I'm not so, I don't know, I, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that it is so complex, the media environment, the polarization, the discussion about uh, uh, what is good or not related to uh, an issue that you even think about it can be a problem and then it is so unexpected that everything that you can do to to have this kind of if I already told the world or the citizens or my community that I have that possible conflict of interest then it is that I'm not trying to um, to make something wrong. It is you've got it there. I've already told you. Then I, I'm not saying that you should publish all the relations that you've got in your life. And and I think it's there's no perfect system to this. And and it's going to be part of the experimentation. And in some countries, it can be more open and other less open. But what I'm saying is that we should start to have these discussions inside our think tanks or our organizations to be in a better position in the, in the future or in the present. And is, is there a, how do we get around then, how do you get around the kind of muddying of the waters? Because at the moment, um, the more, the, you know, there's, a, there's, there's a just, we're just awash with information from yeah. every source. And, you know, it, if you look at, you know, some organizers, some politicians, some individuals just use, a, they bombard the public, they bombard their audiences with information and it all just becomes a bit of white noise or white heat. And um, is there a risk that we get into that territory as well? Or are there ways around it? Because all information in a sense is good or all good information is good. And we shouldn't be afraid to make that jump, to make the leap. In general, in general, one of the problems that all the things that go around the world is that we are not necessarily a, a problem of all the people reading us, all the people asking for more data. In general, it's not that we have a popularity problem or risk. Then 
uh, perhaps that can be a future problem for think tanks when we were really successful in our communication policies. But in this moment, I believe that uh, the info that we publish in our website, and in some cases, perhaps once a year, we publish on their social network with a report or something like that, it's not necessarily going to be uh, uh, incredible amount of data that make our audiences to, to not listen to us anymore. Uh, I think in general, our problem is the opposite. It is that we are not necessarily making enough targeting or micro targeting our audiences to send them the message that we are trying to to the appropriate person or the appropriate uh, public okay can and can i can i take you back a little bit to talk about some of the wider work of jackie Arrow? what what you're working on at the moment what you're experiencing in the sector how you're working generally with the media and in particular obviously there might be some lessons for some yeah. of the think thinkers who are here so what are you what are you guys working on now yeah now now particularly now we are we are working on infodemic that is all the disinformation related to the pandemic uh, yeah. that allowed us and give us some opportunities incredible opportunities that is the the, the most important is that everyone is worried about that and everyone is trying to have good information to have more um I don't know. Um, yeah, to just be better informed, to make yeah, choices. Because... Or choices or so on. And then we are working on that. We, we, with a network that we create and we build since 2014. With, uh, when we started, we were just fat checkers in the States, in France and UK. And now we are a network that is called Latam Chequea in 18 countries in the region with 35 organizations working together on this because as you perhaps know there's not necessary viral contents that are argentinian viral contents related to covid uh, they are perhaps the same you you saw in uk the 5g uh, yeah, content absolutely. and we saw it also and he, perhaps someone else uh, saw about i don't know etc and then if someone in Peru or in Colombia already check that, uh, it is not efficient that I start to check it again uh, from the beginning. The, the only thing with this type of work that we are, are adding is one expert from the country to give us our audience a voice that perhaps can be recognized for our audience, but not all the work then what, what this pandemic show us is that what we already know in the past that at least for the disinformation uh, phenomenon we need to work uh, collaborative because uh, we are much more quickly to to yes. answer and to to have a yeah and no, sorry. So, so, the, and so, this obviously. So, there are potentially language barriers to overcome, but technology. How how do you how do you get around that? How how are yeah. you working together in that sense? We, and again, are there lessons for think tanks? Because most of us operate in English, but that's that's only for you know conferences and events like this. But I'm guessing there are technology related lessons here for us. Yeah, well, one one of the things that we we start to work on. Uh, four or five years ago with an organization from UK that is called Full Fact is how we can make fact checking with EI uh, more quickly for the journalists to answer. And one of the things that I can imagine can happen also with think tanks is if there are some think tanks that have the same agenda, there are some of the research when they are looking for good experiences or good practices or et cetera, that can be the same. I don't mind if it is in French or in English or in other language. Uh, all of these, I, I imagine technology can help us to, to do it in a more efficient uh, way.
And obviously, yes. I'm not saying that technology is going to re replace us, not the journalists, not the think tanks, leaders or researchers. What I'm thinking all the time is what, what machines can do today is to have a good context of the data, to have the accurate context of the evidence we are presenting. And then I want my team, at least, to be concentrated on that. I don't want my team being listening for interviews on TV if the computer can do that for us. Yeah. Or I don't want my team looking for a statistic that is already on the website and can about bring that to me. I want my team putting in context and asking the appropriate person the better analyze of that info. And I think that that's perhaps also something that can happen inside think tanks. If the think tanks identify some agenda that is every year important for a group of think tanks, and it perhaps it is how we are going to um, improve that research with more good practices or good more policies or so on, I, I can imagine technology can help us. I can imagine it would. And actually, I'm just I'm interested here in that point alone. You know, how can think tanks themselves? I mean, there are networks. I know communications people from other think tanks. Yeah. The researchers know other people from think tanks if they're working on China, they hear, but I'm not sure how much sharing goes on. Um, sharing of information, sharing, you know, and that that's a, that's a really interesting and possibly very important point for us. Um, I, so I'm not wrong. That's part of the work that On Think Tanks is doing and part yeah. of the mission of On Think Tanks and how they can share practices or lessons or also failures that can <laughs> help others yeah. to do their work better. And exactly, and I'm very aware that you know since since lockdown, since March, there has been some really good sharing of experiences and information among think tankers, um, and it's a good template. If we're not, as you say, and on think tank, if we're not doing this already, then this certainly sounds like um, some opportunity. So I'd be good to hear from the audience. So we're getting some questions. That's in. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to. Can I? Can I maybe just one? Can I just take you back a step and again talk maybe about your work in Chicky Then we'll come on to uh, the questions. Um, but where where is the world going? Where is where is the world going? That's a big question. But where are we going in this area? Um, there are obviously stages. If you go back, you're a relatively young compared to us organisation. But what what are the next steps? I'm feeling yeah. that there needs to be a you know a microphone, a volume. We need yeah. to be shouting and more yeah, the, leaning the... in. We, we have at least three um, goals or ideas that are um, more or less shared with all the community. One, it is that um, we need to be much more innovative in terms of formats and the way we use or we present the info not leaving the motion just for the people that are the bad actors creating this information. And then um, in general, and that's perhaps the problem that also some of the think tanks have, is that in the past, good journalists, we are serious. And, and not boring, but just a bit. Yeah? Yeah. Then what we are convinced about it is that we need to be uh, really accurate, but also interesting. Interesting in terms of formats, entertainment, and so on. We can use all the ways that we can to take the attention for people, because if not, we are lost. And that's yeah. one of the ideas. The other is that we need to be quicker. Because as um, if we intervene and we publish a debunk uh, or a fact check, just a moment after the statement starts to be viral, we have much more impact and we have some research that show that. Then we need technology to be to have a quick clearance response when we have this. 
technology, not just AI and machine learning and all that, also technology in terms of workflow related yeah. to different organizations in different countries. I, I should have one person in each country of the world to phone or to chat at 4 a.m. in the night and ask, can you check this for me? And we should create that much more uh, agile, we said in Spanish, I don't know. Yeah, like. Absolutely, uh, this, this is a, I mean, this is a fight, yes? We're, yeah. this and, is in a fight. You're, and just, what side are you on? And, yeah, and just the last one is, we know that this information and bad information gonna be there. It's not that we're gonna finish with that. Then it is really, really, really important that we invest much more money in education about critical thinking, about good and bad sources, about algorithm and how the social network works. And then there's there's so much lack of info in the, educa the formal education systems in some of our countries and what the people need to be well informed today that we know that as fact checkers we need to increase much more our education areas and work with others of course to do that uh, in a more stronger way than we did in the past yeah uh, three really really good strong points and you know particularly on education um but of course we need to be accurate we need to be interesting I mean, to be fast. And, 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 and as you said, that three points, they are not necessary points to, to got it with more journalists. What, what that answer explain or, or show is that we need to work with others. And I imagine, I suspect the same happened with think tanks. Think tanks need much more diversity in their, in their teams and not just good researchers to do their work better. And are, is the role for journalists? Lots of think tanks employ engaged journalists. So there's a role in there somewhere for, for more journalists or for a, of a journalistic approach, perhaps? I'm guessed to say yes. Yeah, yeah, but journalists, or perhaps I, today, I'm not sure journal, I need a journalist. In some cases, perhaps, I need a really creative person doing uh, images or videos that citizen or sitting with a good research or having a good conversation with a research can prepare a piece that can be viral in some hours. I'm, I'm not sure that journalists, it depends on the profile, but journalists in some cases have the same problems that research have. Yeah. And then, if we mix much more than just journalists and research, perhaps we are in a better uh, in a better position to fight the guys yeah. or the women that were creating this info. Okay, I, th I think that's a that's a really good point. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go down. Yeah. I I will try to group the questions, but um, if I can't, then we can take them randomly. I'm sure that's fine. Um, so, I have a question from Fikil. I hope that's the right pronunciation. Apologies if it's not from South Africa. Um, if you have conflict of interest and you mention it, then and you mention it, then how valid will the think tank's report be? Uh, I mean, would our judgment be compromised based on this conflict of interest, and could this affect how the public then perceive the work and what the think tank publishes? It's My a good question. Yeah. It, it's a really good question. Uh, my experience is exactly the opposite, and and what it's it's a situation. It's a similar situ situation that the situation that happened with the media when the when when the when we ask as fact checkers the media to follow a policy a correction policy, and we ask the media to correct their content in a transparent way, the owner of some media said to me, but if, I'm do, if I do what you ask me, the public tomorrow 
are not going to be trust on my report. And my answer to that director of, of owner of a newspaper, and the same answer is for you, is on the contrary, if you correct when you are wrong, people is sure people are sure, is sure that when you are not correcting you are independent and the same happened with the conflict of interest in Chicago's case in our story there were three articles where we disclosed at, at the end of the article on the research uh, that we received financial from the people from one of the people that were mentioned in the in the article and it's not that our audience uh, criticize us most of the people ask uh, thanks us that we uh, explain that and then obviously the same happened with with the transparency policies in the countries and all the people that work on transparency they were in the in the beginning of a transparency policy implementation there are some people that lose their trust and that's going to happen perhaps in the short term but in the long term you are going to earn much more than what you're losing i i think that's true i do, i do think that's true although i've seen the i've seen you know in the argument over brexit in the uk yeah. sorry to bring it up but um yeah, yeah, still yeah. smart still her thing from it um but you know that there's there was a lot of argument against experts that were dragged up because because the IMF, because everybody gets it wrong, because economists get get it wrong, because and so well, you can't trust the experts. You can't because look, they get it wrong, they get it wrong, they get it wrong. So you have to know. I that's no reason not to make predictions, not to you know use evidence, not to correct yourself when you're wrong. But you know, there's there would be a risk. We, you know, think tanks, other organizations need to be in a position where they can counteract that kind of negative, of course, of course, of course, of course they're wrong, of course they are because they're experts kind of thing. Um, but I, 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 you know, I feel very strongly that your, your points are right. And many media organizations do this and they've done it sometimes for a long, Guardian Corrections, they've done it for a long time. Um, but do you do you sense that there's more of a more of a movement now and a willingness? Um, in yeah, not not as strong as it should be. But the problem of this information make this necessary for all the 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 organiza organizations, think tanks, media companies, governments that want to be different from that actors that are not transparent then what yeah. i'm saying is that sooner or later it's going to be necessary then why why it's don't we start I, why don't we start before or why don't we start first and use it that also as a strategy uh, to be in a better position i i'm not saying with this that the governments that are against you because you are criticizing them or so on if you are in a think tank don't gonna use it they're gonna use it but that yeah. that person's perhaps gonna use it if you didn't publish it they're gonna use it in the same way because they are going to look at it in a document that is yeah. not necessarily open and they're gonna put it on the social network then I'm not sure that the, that's not clever to just open it. Okay, okay. that's good. That, good, good points. Okay, I'm going to go to Victoria. Um, while transparency in funding seems like a clear ask, would you also think think tanks, uh, would you also ask think tanks to be more transparent in their ideology? Some think tanks claim not to have an agenda, a political viewpoint. So, um, what do you think of this claim, Laura? Yeah, I, in general, my, my answer is going to be yes, more transparent in all the issues that you can. And uh, be transparent is not necessarily uh, create something that is not. If you, are, if you are an organization that is not necessarily partisan or is not necessarily an organization working in more than some values or principles, you just be transparent about that. 
But what also saying is that in some cases we are not necessary we are not necessarily transparent with our own staff about some of the decisions that we do about the agenda. It is we are moving the agenda because of the funds. We are we are moving that because we have the intuition that it can be good or what then perhaps just put it on the table that we have that um, freedom to decide let us in a better position when they criticize they told us in some cases why do you check this and not check that why do you pay attention to this content and not to the other if i have in my case, we have a methodology and we explain the people that we have the chance to decide. But we also use three principles. And if we don't use that principles, you can criticize me with a good reason. But if I'm following that principles and I'm deciding, I'm in the, in the page where I agree with you that that's my contract. And what I'm imagining is that uh, perhaps think tanks can have something similar to that. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to sort of take slightly. We still have some other questions to come to, but okay. I'm I'm thinking of, right, for example, there, are, there there's journalism in China. There's there's journalism and sort of media outlets that are based, let's say, well, uh, from uh, come from China, based in London. We pay yeah. journalists a lot of money to produce content around China and state narratives, and it's very favourable. It's light. They go into supplements and magazines and the narrative is often how happy life is in china and it's not it, it you know it, it it's not, it's not, false. It's, it's not that's my point so when the narrative comes is is there something in there there's stuff that just isn't checkable um and that's a way in that's a way around that's a it, is that a growing risk or is that something that's you know it's it's too soft in a way it's yeah uh, what, what i related to that is what the neuroscience explain us is we as you as humans uh, if you give to if you give to me a story and if you give to me a data a number a, uh, i don't know an evidence with without the story i'm gonna choose the story then and what what i'm saying with this is that we should be more clever and use stories to present our evidence and our data but also we can be much more interest in create this capacity with our citizens and then explain more how we decide what to share or not in the social network. Explain more how we decide what type of content we are reading or how we can get informed or not. All that type of content can be uh, making important contribution to the public debate and to the discussion of public policy, even though we don't realize about it. Because if we create the chance for the citizens to think about it before they share something in the social network that relates to a policy that they don't like because they saw an incredible picture, then we have a, a better solution or perhaps a better solution in the future than what we have today. But it is more, 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 more education or media literacy or data literacy or whatever you want to call it. But more than absolutely, that. absolutely. And I don't know, maybe Victoria from Cast from Clay uh, wants to come in on that as, as well at some point. So yeah, storytelling very important. Okay, and Anna Purna, uh, hi Laura. In your opinion, uh, what is the best way to engage with a journalist or media house? In our case. There are one, they are one of the key stakeholders. And I so say all think tanks. Yeah. Then I think there are different approaches and also it depends on how the environment of the media in the country where you're based. And there are some media that are doing journalists and some others that they call them media and they are 
perhaps doing politics or, or other things, then knowing really, really well your ecosystems of media can help you a lot to define the strategies or the better approach uh, to, to have a good uh, relation or approach. Some of the strategies that we use with relative success in the past is it is a relation that we are or you should you sh the you should cre you should create that relation not just asking the journalist when you need the journalist to publish something that you want and then what i'm saying in that in what i'm trying to say is it's not a relation where one is giving all the time and the other is receiving all the time then i know there are a lot of think tanks that when a journalist called them to have an opinion from an expert decide not to appear because they are not necessarily a good moment to do it and then in the mind of that journalist that's going to be with a less I'm Laura and plus or less if I didn't answer that time and you don't give to me what I'm looking for you're less for me and that's not necessarily regional but but it, it depends on day by day relationship okay that's really interesting because that was that was my follow-on question <laughs> because I know that definitely at Chatham House, we take decisions on whether there are some outlets we will engage with. Because if it's a pre-record, if it's a pre-record broadcast interview, then it can be cut up and taken out of context. If it's live, you could be, you, someone could be put on with someone and it's just a stitch up and the package is a yeah. stitch up. So, um, so our take is, well, actually, we won't engage with you. Um, it's not always something we are transparent about because that would then you know, it puts us in a position that's difficult to back out of. Yeah. Um, so occasionally we do engage, but it would be very, very frequently, uh, very infrequently. infrequently. Yeah. What yeah. I'm saying related to engage is not necessarily be friend. Engage can be yeah. that in some cases you send to the journalist that you know that in the past report about an issue, an article that you read somewhere else that can be useful, or it's, it's not that you just call the journalist in the moment you need them to publish or to spread something. What, what I'm talking about the strategy, I, I invite you to also believe on that type of informal uh, building of trust uh, yeah. with the yeah. journalist. Now it would be. I, I tell you, I, I would love it if um, if anyone's seen Erica's message. Uh, you can join us on camera. Um, I'm, I'm noticing our staff meetings. <laughs> fewer and fewer people join on camera, but it always adds to the yeah, to the conversation. Sure. So if anyone wants to join on camera, please do. Uh, if anyone has any ah, speaker, I'm going to find out if I pronounced Fickle's name correctly. Oh no, I thought Fickle was joining on camera. Um, but yeah, I, I, okay, let me, Ben. Yeah, I'd also like to hear for any journalists, uh, not think tankers. Um, ben, did you join us? Do you have a question? Uh, I do, I thought I'd be brave <laughs> and go on camera. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, Hi, Where are you? I'm, I'm, I'm in Bristol in the UK. Um, okay. I'm, I'm a it's manager it's at Transform Drug Policy Foundation. Um, so we, we, we do quite a lot of um, opinion pieces in, in print and broadcast. Um, uh, but I, I was I was um, I want to ask from from a journalist perspective, when when you have a um, an expert from from a think tank giving expert opinion, um, I always see there's there's a trade off between um, wrapping up your your comment into sounding like in a sound bite. So you're trying to get something quite snappy and catchy and memorable. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the trade-off between that and actually sounding intelligent and um, thoughtful and having something really a, a well thought through answer, which might not be as easily understood. But for, from a journalist, I don't know if you're looking for something more, I guess it depends on the outlet, I suppose. 
So yeah, but uh, social media. But is is there a trade off? Yeah, what I'm thinking is, if you are inside an organization and a think tank, you already know who's the better person in your team to be on camera. And one of the things that is important is to know clear who's the RTB there and who's there not. Is 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 with with the with the visual and with the videos and with all that, they are not necessary all the team to be there. That that's one of my recommendations. If it's some someone that can speak uh, comfortable with the camera, it's better not to put them there. And and just write an uh, write an article, prepare a video pre-record by you uh, after one, two, three time or ten uh, ten times, or etc. What what I'm saying related to your question is that what journalists are looking all the time in general is a good opportunity to have a good expert talking about the issue of the day. And then the problem with that is most of the think tankers experts don't necessarily want to talk about the issue of the day because they didn't study enough or you didn't have a research to like background and so on. Then what my recommendation all the time is if you have the chance to be already in the agenda of the journalists related to the issue the the days that you have a good opportunity you have a window opportunity you just email her or she saying juan maria or etc is open to give you background about the story of today and then you 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 are not going to change the way like media work then media works with the new of the day in most of the cases and sometimes they prepare special interviews or special research and and then in the day by day uh, work of the journalists you should work to be in the agenda and you should follow the agenda of your country and be there, be prepared and be first in the journalist inbox to remind her or she that you are there for a good argument or for a good opinion, given background of what has happened that day. I think that's a really good point, Laura, that, that, that there's, a, there's a sort of long-term investment that that exactly. we can make with the media so we know them because it's very true you can't always get the right person you can't always turn around a, a request for an interview and you know sometimes it's just a missed opportunity but i, d I don't know ben what's your experience is is are you asking yeah. because you have sort of issues around that or does it generally work well you want to improve it what's your situation it, it, it's more about the i guess the replayability if you do a so a lot of radio stations are now doing um zoom or, or skype interviews as well and live streaming on youtube and facebook yeah. <laughs> so it's this isn't all outlets of course but some of them are they i found they're looking for sound bites that they can recycle and then put on their own social media feeds so I've, I've sort of had to sort of make um, decisions on whether to sort of, um, when, when, when you're sort of doing a, a, a practice run, about whether to sort of hone, hone what you're trying to say a bit more or try to say something um, a bit more, uh, not outlandish, but quotable um, um, in order to get a bit more um, coverage and a bit more, um, you can provide a bit more worth in that way, I find. But again, you don't want to sound hysterical because uh, then you're going to be replayed for the wrong reasons. Uh, Perhaps one of one of the ideas that I have is we, you are think tank or are, as organization, always want to be in the position of the the person who know a lot about that. Yeah. If you you are an expert. You are not that person that speak about everything they ask it then 
the, the, the problem is that in general, the media and the citizens in the social networks speak about what's happening immediately in that moment, in that day. Then there are these type of two moments or two times that can be together. And then what I'm saying is that you should follow this agenda of the day by day and just pick up the issues that are more related with your agenda that you are already pushing to, to God. And sure. each, time, each time you identify an opportunity on the discussion of the day or the week that can be related with your own agenda from the long term, you should try to pick it or you just try to be there. Because every uh, success with this strategy gonna make you much more uh, viral or can allow you to reach more different people from the general people that you're always talking to than the uh, strategy that you can bring by your own. For example, you are, I don't know, launching a new product related to an index to measure, I don't know, quality in the public schools. And that's going to be for journalists, for politicians, for teachers, in, and that's it. But if one day that's the big problem with an exam in all the country and the people start to discuss a quality of the education in the country you can bring that that's going to be not only for all the people that i mentioned but also for the general public and then that that's i i think that one of the things that i always recommend it, is the things that should follow the agenda and trying to use it in the sure. way they come Sure. So yeah, it's so it's about make, making it relevant and, and, and tailoring it. So you, you yeah. I guess you're providing more worth and more quality. Yeah. It's more genuine. No, I get that. Cool. Thank you. And would would you sacrifice the sort of interest, Ben, to get the story? Because that you know, it, because as you said, sometimes it has to be worthy content. Yeah. It's but sometimes it's difficult to stretch it to make it interesting or faster. Or the points that Laura was making earlier. Do you then sacrifice that and lose the coverage? How, you know, how just, just a question for you. I guess it, 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 it depends on the story. Um, but if there's, if there's a risk to reputation by getting the, the, the message wrong, then don't do it. Avoid, yeah. avoid it's not worth it. Um, but if it's, um, uh, I mean, we, we, we do a lot of um, comments on, um drug data so um every year we get new new data and statistics on drug related deaths so that that always provides us an opportunity to to provide comment and we it's kind of reliable you know when it's going to come up um so we'll we'll do a lot of um preparation to get to be there first and to get on the wire um but if um if something comes up as unexpected and we need a bit more time to digest that and then to get um, our position right. Uh, and if we miss the boat, then it's better to miss the boat rather than to get it wrong. And then you have to sort of deal with the... the uh... I, I listen to you, Ben, and I have a kind of, of flashback of 20 years or 15 years when I was communication director at CPEC. And that my day by day discussion with the researchers. It is, you are not in the university, you are in a think tank. Then you want to change things and you want to have impact. And if no one read your research, that's not gonna happen. Then perfect is enemy of possible in terms of communication. Yeah. And then it's not that I'm yeah. saying to you, you should put your people to speak every time a journalist call you, because there are a lot of times that journalists ask you about things that are not, not in the agenda of your think tanks. That's a good moment to recommend other. 
my recommendation is if you have the chance to give a good answer for the journalist, not necessarily inside your organization, but perhaps in others, yeah. you are creating that relation that I was talking about a moment ago. Mm. Then have a good okay. agenda with other think tanks or other organizations is also a good invest in terms yeah. of how that can work better with the media. Yeah, good relationship building all around. Yeah. That. And Ben actually made a very good point about data. You know, the more think tanks use data, the stronger the ground we're on, you know, for sure. Um, and of course, data can be cut in many ways, but, you know, data-led research is, yeah. is, is critical. Um, well, ben, do you have anything else? I'm really glad you came on. Thank you. If, uh, the invitation is open to um, <laughs> everyone else. There was a point made earlier by Enrique, so we're going to go back a little bit yeah. to... Um, this was a point to you. I don't know if you see it in the chat box, but I remember it's to you. I remember that the think tank you used to work at had Elizabeth's funders on a wall in its meeting area. Someone I was with uh, then mentioned that the list included Monsanto. You explained, I think it was you, 2006 or seven, something along the lines of, but we do not hide it. And they are one among many others. I thought that was a very good example of volunteering information. And actually, that reminds me of an example probably around about the same time at Chatham House where the, uh, we, we worked with Monsanto because we had to. They were relevant. They were critical players. I think we took no funding from them, but we acknowledged their involvement in a project because the project would have been less valid without them. Yeah. And there was we had a, a negative piece in The Guardian about it. But the only way we could do that was to be transparent about it and to go back to your point. It made the piece, it made the outcome, the report stronger. And of course, if you want to criticize, you can criticize, but it doesn't make the research any less valid. Um, so that was, that's a, that's a good, and, and actually meeting rooms sound quite visible, you know, to actually remind people who are there and then. We now have the funders on the corridor as you walk into the building. Um, and obviously on the website. Yeah. Um, but yeah, do you have any? Do you remember that? Was that was that you? Yeah. Monsanto. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, just let's let's just go, go. We still have sort of five minutes or so. Okay. Um, where um, where are the media organisations? Um, that you know are that are obvious that that we can go to um that you think are doing a really good job working with think tanks and i guess you know you can you well, talk about latin america argentina but you know who would who would be prepared to work with us as it were for, for uh, sure, to take this forward for sure just if you didn't know it the international fact checking network has a group of organizations that are working on evidence-based communication because what what fact checkers are doing is to put in better data or better information for the public there and trying to separate opinions from facts then for sure that's that can be a good point to start nowadays as duke uh, university published last month there are 304 organizations around the world doing fact checking and then that's and all the contact and all that is are open then i'm gonna put it in the chat it will be useful for 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 you to, to use that uh, the other is all the media that have a data team show us that they are they are at least open to listen more about evidence communication. Uh, the other person or area that can be useful is there are some um, a TV channel, but also newspapers or magazines that have a special section working with the infographics that needs regularly data. That also a good uh, door or a window to to knock on, because they are all the time looking to yeah. put data to put it on 
a graphic. Um, I, you know, I think that I think that's very true. I think you know, there's a, a lot of journalists, newsrooms under pressure. They're very willing to take you know, PR puff pieces. Sometimes they you know they take they take what's presented to them. And if they take it from, you know, if they, and, and, and if there's a sort of bad way uh, or there's a negative about that, there's also a positive. And think tanks definitely have a role there. Yeah. So make sure, as you said, that your content is interesting. Make sure it's accurate. Make sure there's a story. And then when you present that to a newsroom, to a hard-pressed newsroom, you're at, uh, hard, um, hard-pressed newsroom, you are actually giving them something that they can work with easily. So you're going with the flow. Um, and thank you for that. Now, we had our five minute warning from Erica. So I don't know if you have any any final remarks, Laura, but I'm going to I'm my my key takeaways are what you said, Laura, just about the presentation, about being serious, not about not boring, about being accurate, but interesting, about the need to be quicker to use technology um, about education in particular. And then the comments around networks. Networks is so important, are so important. And learning from others and trial and error is important yeah. too. And not being afraid to put your hand up and saying you get, you know, we get something wrong. So do you have any uh, sort of that, final that, comments in the last Just minute? two final comments. One is that don't believe necessary that things that in the past were in a way today are in the same then perhaps when I started to be a journalist 20 years ago, there were some of the practice that I use today that were not necessarily good. And then uh, experiment and change and be flexible, not about your values, but about the format or the ways you approach others. That's one. And the second one is we are always talking about networks and collaboration, and that takes time. Then it's not that you're going to create a network and tomorrow you are going to have the results. We created Latin Pekea in 2014, and we are having excellent results during the pandemic six years after. But if you talk with the coordinator of that networks, one year ago, she believes the project or the initiative was a failure then okay. be patient continue to create that relation relation with other think tanks but also relation with the journalists and the media that you believe are in the same page as you trying to give good information for the citizens in your country I think that's a, such a good point to end on. And, and, and I mean, when I saw there was a video from 2008, I guess, when it was John McCain and Barack Obama, <laughs> uh, and McCain was in a town hall meeting, and someone said, I'm scared of Obama, he's an Arab or something. And uh, you could see McCain, his opposition, his Republican opposition, shaking his head and taking the microphone away from the woman and saying, you're wrong. You, you know, this is just, you know. now." I can't imagine that well, might happen on one side. It wouldn't necessarily happen in elections at the moment. But, you know, I think that the, I, he too, literally took the microphone. And I think that amplifying the good messages are really, really important. Yeah. And you've given us some really great pointers for doing that. I hope I'm listening. I hope the other colleagues, other think tankers and from, from the media and elsewhere were listening to. Um, Laura, Thank you so much. That was really enlightening and positive and some really good practical tips. Um, we shall be in touch. Um, thank you. So thank you, Laura.